Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing the second part of the Grow With Me pajamas from Ellie and Mac. This is a free pattern from sizes 6 months to, to 14 years. I am going to be making this set here which is the shirt and the pants. I've already made the pants in another tutorial so if you're interested in checking that video out you can. I'll leave that in the link um, down in the description or in the card. Um, but today we will be working on the shirt. Super excited. I have already made one set here. So here is how the shirt looks. I made it with a super cute plaid um, with the black accent fabric. But today we will be making it with the red. Looks so good. These are Christmas jammies. I'm obsessed with them. So cute. So we'll be making this one today. Um, so of course, if you haven't already, check out the Ally and Mac. Go grab the pattern. You can sew with me. We can do this together. It's super fun. Um, your kids are going to love it. My, my son is absolutely obsessed with these jammies. I made them out, out of double brush poly from It's So Bucky Fabrics. It is absolutely beautiful. I wish that they made this pattern in my size, but I need to find, <laughs> I definitely need to find an, an adult version because they are super comfy. So let's just get straight into cutting out the pattern. So like I said, I got the pattern over at Ellie and Mac. I'm going to leave the link in the description box below or in the comments and you can go over and get the free pattern. I cut out the size six for this shirt. So, but you do get from six months all the way up to 14, um, size 14. So I am going to be using this beautiful brushed, um, double brushed poly that I got over at It's So Bucky Fabrics. It's a Canadian shop. Um, absolutely beautiful, nice and light, not too hot, perfect for pajamas or leggings or things like that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out all of the pieces. I'm just speeding this up because it, of course will take a while um, but you need two sleeves so these are the sleeves I'm using I'm making them long they're long sleeves and the uh, little circles there the pattern weights are just regular washers that I get over at the hardware store and I use that just to um, keep my pattern pieces down flat so they don't blow away um, now I'm going to cut out a front and a back bodice piece um, these pieces are exactly the same, um, but you'll see when I cut out the black fabric that there is a front bodice and a back bodice piece. Um, these two pieces are the cuffs. I'm using the normal cuff, but you can use, um, they have a piece for the Grow With Me cuff, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, this is the front top of the bodice, and this is the back top of the bodice. Um, because the back is a little bit higher of course and then the neckband so I'm cutting this out of the black double brushed poly and then I think that's pretty much it so now we can head over to the sewing machine and start to assemble the pattern I'm so excited okay I'll see you there all right so we're gonna start sewing all of our pieces together um, so I'm going to, I have all of my pieces here, we are going to just sort of prep things as we go and then slowly assemble. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to take my sleeves and we're going to sew along the inseam. Now I am using my brother serger today. It is a 655D. Um, you can of course use a regular sewing machine. Just make sure that you use a stretch stitch and that's most likely going to be a zigzag stitch on your machine. And if you've never used a, zig a serger before, um, it's going to give you this type of stitch, which is a stretch stitch, and it also cuts off, it has a little blade on here, and it cuts off some of the fabric um, as you're sewing, so it kind of finishes off the edge. I try not to cut off much fabric because then that's just going to affect my seam allowance. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I really like using the serger. So if you're gonna be working with garments long term, then I definitely recommend grabbing one of these. This one is just like the 1034, which is a very popular brother model. It just has a little bit like some buttons around this side as opposed to the 1034 that are on this side. So very similar machines though, and um, perfect for the beginner. So I have done my first sleeve and I'll go ahead and I'll prepare my second sleeve and we're just putting those with the right sides together and when you're really um, getting this going you can really just kind of fly through it and you can just kind of chain sew everything um, but because I'm doing it as a video then I'm gonna I'll cut it at certain points All right, so we have both of our sleeves, the inseam done. So we can put those to the side. I'm gonna work on my cuffs now, which are these guys. Um, it's hard to tell which way it goes, um, but you wanna make sure that your, stretch, your, your stretchiest is going this way. And you're gonna put that with the right sides together. And when you're using a solid knit, sometimes it's hard to tell which way is the right side. And the right side, basically you just take your knit and you want to just pull on it. And whichever way it's curling towards, um, it's, the curling towards is towards the right side. So, we are going to put the right sides together. And if you don't manage to get it with the right sides together, you probably won't notice any difference when it comes to the solid anyways. Okay. I'll cut them apart. And this is the wrist cuff, and this is the regular one that we're working with, not the grow with me one. Now with these ones, now you're going to put your hand inside of the cuff and you're just going to fold it in half back on itself. And I just like to line up the seam and then we're just going to make sure that, that all, those two raw edges are lined up together and then that's going to be your cuff. And you can fiddle with it more when you start to install it onto your sleeve. But this is going to be your little cuff all ready to go. And I'll do the second one. I find it easier to put my hand inside of it and then fold it up. And then kind of keep it stretched out so that we can line everything up good. And if you're not um, used to working with knits, and it can be a little fiddly, especially if you have a curly knit. Double brushed is, is pretty decent though, it's not too bad. All right, we have both of our cuffs now. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take my sleeve and I'm going to put my cuff on the inside we're going to line up the seam of the cuff with the inseam of our sleeve and making sure that this is the folded edge, the folded edge is going to go inside. So we're lining up the all the raw edges and we're going to line up that side that seam right there. And you can clip or pin at this time and just making sure that there's three layers and they're all lined up nicely. Now, depending on your fabric, if you are, if the cuff is a little smaller, then as you sew, you just kind of kind of stretch it a little bit just so that 
it um, is the same size as the sleeve fabric but it should be it should be just fine I'm going to quickly put the other one into the other sleeve and then we'll attach them and lining up these uh, seams really does make for a, a nicer finished product you don't necessarily have to but um, if you're giving these as gifts then having that little extra layer of professionalism makes the finished garment look so much nicer okay so now I'm just going to stick it in the machine and I will sew all the way around Just do a little bit at a time, and then I adjust a little more, and then I adjust. And I just like to inspect it, and then I'll take the cuff out flip it around and make sure that I got all of my layers and it looks good. So I'll do the second one. I'm not touching my I'm trying to get this. I'm just going to show you what it should look like, this finished sleeve. <laughs> so that seam is pretty much bang on. I see a little bit of raw edges, but I don't think that, that might, might be a problem. That's why it's always good to inspect and make sure. So we have our sleeves done. So now we can work on the bodice. So we have these two pieces that are gonna go at the top of their chest. One is the back. This one's the back because it's higher. And then this one is going to be the front. Um, the large bodice pieces, they are exactly the same, so you don't have to um, worry about mixing them up. <clears throat> so I'm just going to lay this down. And my fabric with the armpit area here. And we'll take one of the pieces. Again, I'm going to stretch to make sure that this is the front because that's where it's curling towards so we're gonna put them right sides together and then that should line up perfectly and we're just gonna clip those into place and I'll get the other one going while we're here armpit areas figure out okay that's the front and 
And now we can sew those two on. So this is how it is looking. Kind of finishes off the armpit. Um, you can do a top stitch along here if you feel you need to. That is um, an option in the pattern, but, or you can just press it and leave it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it because it really doesn't take anything away it looks good once it's all finished in my opinion <clears throat> so now we're going to put the bodice together so I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it flat and I will take the other one and we're just going to put it right sides together lining up the armpit corner And then the bottom. This really goes fast though. Once you get everything all cut out. And then we're going to put the shoulder seams together. So we're going to sew four different spots. side <clears throat> I still have a, a residual cough that's kind of hanging around since I got COVID <laughs> so sorry about the clearing of the throat it's kind of annoying all right and then we're just gonna clip the chop shoulder seams Oh, I'll just go in like a clockwise kind of thing. You don't have to worry about these tails because once you um, sew on the sleeve, that will finish off those tails. So now we have our bodice all done. Looks good. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm going to attach my sleeve. So you can use pins or clips to do this. We're gonna do it with the bodice inside out. And then we're gonna take, so you're gonna take the sleeve with it folded in half. I'm just going to clip this up here and that's just going to give me a marking to where I can line it up with the shoulder seam. So, we're actually going to take the sleeve turn it right sides out and we're going to line up the seam with the seam of the side seam. Take the uh, sleeve and kind of put it inside. So grab that seam and just 
and line it up with the side seam of the bodice. Put a little clip in there. And then at the top, that's where we had that little clip with the scissors. We'll just line that up with the shoulder seam. And then you'll just kind of work around and it should fit perfectly inside. And I think I'm going to sew this first and then do the second sleeve just because I don't want any of these clips to come out. So do them one at a time. It's a little bit easier. work around I'm just going to show you how it looks. So there is the sleeve, making sure that all the fabric is caught in there. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one quickly and let my kitty out of the room because she's sick. Okay, so I put on the second sleeve. So now we have this, which is so cute. So now we just need to put the neck band on and then hem the bottom and we are all done. So we have our neck band and I'm gonna find the right side, put the right sides together and then we're going to sew the short side to create a loop. And then I'm going to go over to the ironing board and I'll show you how I um, attach everything. Okay, so we have our band now. This is the raw or the uh, seam here. We're going to press this, steam press it, and we're going to put the, we're going to fold it in half, so making sure that the seam is on the inside of that fold and just lining up the raw edges and that will create our little neck band. If you have difficulties with your fabric because it's knit, you can starch it up if you want to. Just use some spray starch and that will definitely help to keep things less curly. The double brush is not too bad. But I'm just going to go like that and then we will give it a steam <clears throat> because you're using the knit the steam will um, press it better than a dry iron and it won't set it completely but it will definitely give like a little memory crease at least and that's all that you really need Okay, so we have our seam here and I'm going to pin on the other side of it. 
I'm just marking that and then we take it and we fold it the opposite way and find our other two points this is just quartering we're finding we're taking it and we're making it into quarters um, when you're attaching the neckband you'll have to stretch the neckband as you sew so this is smaller than the opening um, and by doing that it's actually going to make it lay flat it sounds crazy if you've never done it before but um, <clears throat> it's it's just how it, it, it goes <laughs> I don't know it's it's one of those weird things that doesn't make any sense but once you do it you're like it looks so good <laughs> so now we have to find the quarters of our shirt neck so I'm just gonna take the side seams the shoulder seams and I will put them together to create one point here and then the other point will be in the middle of the chest and then we're going to align those two points and find the other two and this is not going to land on the uh, the shoulder seams surprisingly enough it's not quartered that way so it's just kind of above it but you want it to be quartered evenly so that you can make sure your neckband is even <clears throat> okay so now we have all four uh, quart so now you have all four <laughs> quadrants I don't know um, so with the neckband I'm going to put the seam onto the back of it so this is the back because it's higher um, and we're going to pin it onto the right side of our garment and keeping the raw edges lined up and I'll just pin it you can clip it if you want to so I just want to make sure you don't twist your neckband and I only pin the four corners so as I go to each area I'll end up removing one of the pins. Okay. And like I said, the neckband is going to be smaller, so as long as you're pinning in the right four spots, then you'll be good till you get to your machine. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. My neckband is kind of folded down, so the, the folded edges, edges there, and then we'll have the three layers of fabric um, in the hole. <clears throat> so we're going to go over to the serger, and I'm going to show you as I stretch out the neckband, but I don't stretch the, the actual shirt part we're just stretching okay. the neckband I'm gonna start at the back and I want to start at a pin I want to get it going and then I can once it's like caught in the machine then I can start to do the stretching so I took out my pin and I will get um, it in the machine and then I'll go to my next pin and then this is when you can adjust to make sure all your little layers are nice pulling just the the band and making sure that the shirt is not pulled and then we'll sew And then I'll 
as we keep going. Take out the next pin, grab the next pin after that, pull taut, and then sew it. The next pin. Go to the next one. Make sure you have all the layers. Almost done. I'm just going to go to where we began and then we'll use that as our next point to pull the neck band. Check it out. How did we do? Not bad. Snip off our. I'm going to go back to the ironing board and I will steam this quick. Okay. So here is. The top, and I'll just give that a steam. And I, I think that this, you know, you could totally do top stitch, but I think it looks good just the way it is. So now I'm just going to work on hemming the bottom of the shirt. Here's the bottom, and I'm going to do, again, another memory press with my um, iron. I will be using a cover stitch machine, so if you've never seen a cover stitch before, then you'll um, be excited to see this. Now there's a few different ways you can hem a shirt like this. If you want to use your serger, you can, of course kind of finish it off. You can leave that just the way it is. You can serge it and then hem it up and then use um, your regular sewing machine. Um, use a straight sh or a straight or not a straight stitch. Use um, a zigzag stitch just to hem that nicely. Um, but I will be using my cover stitch. And the cover stitch it's kind of the same as the serger in the sense that it does the straight or the uh, the stretch stitch, but it doesn't cut off any fabric as you're going. So essentially I could sew in the middle of the garment and it would have a beautiful stretch stitch that looks like the surged edge with all the um, there's I think four different threads you can put four threads on there it's an interesting machine and if you're making garments especially stretchy garments like this um, it's 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 definitely a good investment but if I was gonna skip one machine and just kind of make it work with my other ones. It would probably be this one. <laughs> I just wanted it because it was fun. <laughs> okay, so the way that you actually have to sew, um, it's very interesting, but you actually just sew from this side, not like this. So you don't even see it. You kind of have to feel it. You'll, you'll have to see when I get it under the, the sewing machine. 
Okay, so here it is. This is the cover stitch um, by Brother. It is the 2340CV. So as you can see with the serger, um, this isn't here because it has the cutting mechanism and all that stuff. So we're going to, we're going to sew from this side. I'm gonna start, and I am using white thread, but I don't really care because it's just the bottom of the shirt. But you're just gonna kind of figure out where your fabric is and then hope that you catch it as you go. And it will give you this double needle look and gives you the stretch. And ideally I'd want it to be right on the edge of the fabric so that it finishes it off, but I'm still somewhat new to this machine so I'm not great at it. And then you kind of want to try to overlap it so that you don't see a beginning or an end. And this machine's really, I haven't quite figured out or got a science down on how to extract your garment from the machine. There's these little buttons here at the top. Um, so I actually, I'm supposed to press two of them. I'm supposed to pull the these two threads and then some people will go and then pull them out from underneath the needle. It's very interesting stuff. And I totally just, okay, I'm just gonna do that. And then there's a third thread you're supposed to press and then that is supposed to pull out from inside the machine. But I don't really understand it. <laughs> I think I got it. I can't figure it out quite yet. So when I end up doing it, I end up kind of messing it up every time. But yeah, I'll just leave that for now. So this is how it looks. I'll zoom in. So ideally this little section here is how it should look, but it's okay. It'll, it, it will keep it from falling down and then there's a nice stretch in the threads. And I'll cut those off afterwards. Okay, so we're done. How adorable is this? This is gonna be so cute and I made the pants in another video so if you haven't already seen the pants and definitely go over there and check it out i hope you enjoyed these types of videos i will be doing one more which will be a nightgown for my daughter um so now my son has his christmas pajamas and i'm super excited for that so thank you so much for watching uh don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and of course if you have any requests for this holiday season any tutorials don't hesitate to ask and come over to instagram i post there every single day so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next tutorial bye guys